We're working in Module 4 where we're talking about customers and jobs. We've already looked at Section 1 where I showed you how to set up customers and jobs. Now we're going to start using some of that information and we're going to start using them by creating estimates. A prime example of an estimate is in a construction company. They will give you a quote or an estimate on what a job is potentially going to cost. And this is a great feature because you can actually take those estimates and turn them into invoices and get paid and then put the money in the bank further down the line. Not all companies use the estimate feature. If you don't use this feature, then you can skip this and go straight to invoicing. But this is the first part of creating estimates. There is a part two to this. Make sure you watch both parts so that you get a full view of how estimates work. Let's flip over to QuickMix and we'll create our first estimate. You'll notice here that we are still in our customer center and I want to leave it open. I'm just going to use the open windows list here and click back on home. We're getting ready now to talk about the entire accounts receivable section, which is all of this right here in the middle of your home screen. If you notice the first one here says estimates. Before I click on that, I want to point out one quick thing. You'll notice that purchase orders and estimates are in the same line. And the reason for that is because these are both considered non-posting. You can actually create an estimate all day long, but if a customer never asks you to do the work and you never do anything with the estimate, it just sits there and it doesn't affect your books really in any way. You would have to run specific estimate reports to see what's going on with those estimates. Like I mentioned also, if your company doesn't use the estimate feature, then you would just start with the invoice feature right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on estimates so that we can start creating our first estimate. I'm going to go ahead and maximize the screen here and the first thing I want to mention is you have this area on the right and you'll see this with invoices as well. If you pull in a particular customer from here, which we're going to do in a second, you will see some information about that customer and job here. You'll see a summary, some recent transactions, some notes. If you don't want to see this, just use this arrow to hide the history. And if you want to show it again for any reason, you can pull it back up. But that will give you more room to work on on your screen. The first thing it asks you at the top is, who is your customer and your job? From the drop-down list, I can pick my customer and my job. And one thing to remember is, if you use the job feature, always click on the job and not the customer. If you click on the customer, what will happen is later when you start running reports, you will see other and you won't know what this is. Always click the job. Notice if I click kitchen remodel, now it says my customer and job is Tom Allen's kitchen remodel. Now something really cool that you can do in QuickBooks is I would like to add a second job to Tom Allen. So instead of a kitchen remodel, I've decided to do an estimate for a sunroom. Now, I don't have to go back to the customer center and set all this up. I can do it right from here. What I'm going to do is go ahead and just remove kitchen remodel. And I have to have the colon at the end of Tom Allen. I'm going to go ahead and put in sunroom. And now I've got Allen, Tom, colon, sunroom. And if you forget that, it shows you right here, customer, colon, job. Now, once I leave the field by hitting the tab or the enter key, it's going to tell me sunroom is not in the list and ask me if I would like to add it. I can do a quick add, which just puts it in this list, or I can go and do a full setup where I put in all that information about the customer address and all that stuff we went through earlier. Typically with a job, just quick add it. Now if I look on my list, I've got two jobs for Tom Allen. The next thing I'm going to see is the class list. Remember I told you that classes allow you to break up your company into smaller sections for reporting purposes. You don't have to use this feature, but if you do, you want to use it consistently so that your reports are accurate. Let's say in this case that it's going to be a remodel. And then notice over here is the template that's being used currently for the estimate. Now I can change the templates for each individual estimate if I want to. I'm going to leave it right now on the one that's there. We will talk about templates in a later module and I'll show you how to create new ones or to edit some existing ones. The next thing you see is the date of the transaction. 
You can put any date you want here. It does not have to be the date that pulls in. Remember, it's going to pull the current date automatically if you've changed an option in the preferences that we talked about. The next thing is the estimate number. It's numbering it sequentially. All items in QuickBooks that are numbered start with the number one checks for example invoices in this case estimates it will number the next one sequentially unless you happen to change it you can make this number anything you want you can even use the letters in the alphabet if you'd like and it will number the next one sequentially this is the name and address that we had typed in for our customer if you happen to be here and you say you know he's really at PO box 125 you can change it here and what will happen is when you're totally finished and you save this, it will go ahead and pop up and ask you if you'd like to save it permanently in their record. The next thing I want to point out down here is where it says item. You have to actually click there to see this drop down menu. Now we're going to talk about items in a later module because items are things that you actually sell your customer or sometimes you buy items, but these are the line items that would actually go on this estimate. When you're looking at this list, sometimes items can be services you provide. If I scroll down the list, sometimes they can be actual inventory parts. They can be what we call non-inventory. They can be assets. You can kind of see the list here. We'll go through later when we talk about items and really look at this. But right now, let's just pick a couple of them from the list. I'm going to pick framing. And you'll notice that it brought in the description, framing labor. I can type over this all day long if I wanted to, and this will also word wrap if I have a lot to say. I'm going to put in the quantity. We're going to say there's 10 of these, and the cost it brought in is 55 because that was set up in the actual item. Now let's say for whatever reason, I'm gonna sell these to him for 50. Maybe it's a new customer and I'm trying to get his business. And I wanted to just mention the unit of measurement that it skipped over. You'll notice it's not available right now. When you set up an item, if you set up the unit of measurement, that means that you can say, this is something I sell by the foot, the yard, the case, and this would be a drop-down list where you could pick that from the list. Now, we're over in the markup column, and I just wanted to show you that you can mark an item up a dollar amount or a percentage. I'm going to go ahead and say 30% of this one. Notice I typed the percent sign in. And if I tab through it, it will do the calculation for me automatically. The last column here where it says non, that means that this customer charges sales tax. That means that I charge sales tax, but this particular item is not subject to sales tax. Typically, if it's a service you provide, it's not, but a physical item, it is. I want to put one more item in here that is a physical part because I want to show you how to mark something up a dollar amount as well. I'm going to go ahead and there are some wooden doors in here and I'll go ahead and pick the exterior wooden door. And I'm going to say a quantity of two of these and I'll just leave the price it pulled in. Now if you notice this time, the markup is a negative number and it's a percentage automatically. I'm going to type over that, but the reason it pulled that is because when the item was set up, they put in the setup that typically they have a particular price they buy it for and a particular price they sell it for. And that way it figured out the markup. But I'm just going to mark it up $1,000. Notice I'm not putting the percents on this time, just the $1,000, and it will calculate for me. I can put in as many line items as I like. This is not the bottom of it. It will keep going on forever. That's a quick way to go ahead and set up a basic estimate. What I'd like to do now is go ahead and talk to you a little bit about some of the things that you see at the top here. And in order to do that, I'd like to stop the video here and go ahead and go into the estimates part two to finish this up. I'll see you shortly. Welcome back, we're in module four, working with customers and jobs. We've been talking about estimates and I wanna go ahead and continue where we left off. This is actually part two of working with estimates. Let's go ahead and flip to QuickBooks and we'll keep going. Now that you know how to enter your line items in your estimate, let's talk about the options at the top of the screen. You'll notice there are several different tabs and we'll start with the main tab. 
the first option that you're going to see here has to do with finding estimates. You're going to find that everything in QuickBooks is in date order. Let's say you were looking for a particular estimate and you couldn't find it. You could use your arrows that take you left or right to look for the next or previous estimate. If you can't find it that way, use this find option right here which lets you put in some criteria so you can search a little bit easier. If you knew the customer and job, you could plug that in. If maybe you had a particular date range you knew you created it, you might look that way. You could look for estimate number or amount. This is only going to look for estimates. It's not going to look in all of QuickBooks for a date range or an amount of money. It's just for estimates. I'll go ahead and cancel that one. The next option is to create a new estimate, which would actually save the one you're on as well. And if you look at the very bottom right hand side of your screen, you'll notice there's an option that says save and new. That's the exact same option. The next one over is an option where you can save your work. If this is taking you a while and you just want to make sure you don't lose it, you can hit the save option. But I want to show you that you can also save this as a PDF. Maybe you need to send it to someone and you need it in that PDF format. You can do that. The next one says delete. This is how you would delete this entire transaction. You can also create a copy. What if your customer asked you to create two estimates and maybe one had a little something that was different? Instead of redoing the whole thing, just make a copy and then make those few changes. The next one is the option to memorize this. We're going to be talking about this in a later module, but basically what it allows you to do is memorize this so that you can pull it up again at any time. You can also mark a transaction as inactive. Basically what that does is QuickBooks is going to keep a record of all of your estimates, but if you don't want this one to show up in reports and things like that, you can mark it as inactive, and then when you're ready, you can activate it again. Moving over to the right, the next one is print. This is where you would go to print this estimate or to preview this, and I want to show you what it's going to look like if you preview it. Right now it's very plain. You would want to come in and customize this if you're going to send a lot of estimates out. Notice I can click to zoom in a little bit, but you'll see that it has your company name and address. It has the name of the customer and their address. You're going to see it says estimate. It's got some information on the right, the name of the project or the job. And then you'll see a description, quantity, unit of measurement, cost, and total. The first thing I want to point out is it does not show the name of the item, which is typically the first column. That's because your customer is going to see the description of the item, but you can name your items anything you want. That's more for internal use. Notice also they don't see the markup. So that column is hidden as well. At the bottom they see subtotal, sales tax, and total. And of course you can customize this to look any way you like. I'm going to go ahead and hit close at the top and that'll take me back to my estimate. You can also under print save this as a PDF again and you can also do a mail merge with Microsoft Word where you can actually create an envelope. If I click on that and make sure I have the correct envelope size chosen and then click OK, it's going to do that mail merge. You have to have Microsoft Word in your computer in order to be able to do this. You'll see it popped up Word down here at the bottom. I can click on it and actually pull up the envelope options. And then if I don't need to change those, I hit cancel and there's my envelope right there that I can print. I'm going to go ahead and say no right now because I don't actually want to print that. The next thing you can do is you can actually email this estimate to your customer. You can see right here, you can email the estimate or the batch. And I want to tell you what the batch is. Right here is a checkbox that says email later. If I set up several different estimates for this customer and I check each one of these, then when I'm ready, I can email the batch over and it will email all the ones that have email later checked. I can also attach a file. If I want to attach a file, all I have to do is hit attach file. And you've seen that option before where you can go through and choose a file on your computer or if you wanted to pull one over that's in Outlook, any way you'd like to attach, you can. You can also create an invoice straight from here. 
Now chances are you're not going to be on this screen when you're ready to do that, but you can if you want to. And let me just mention the Start Project. Intuit sells a product called Mavenlink, which is more like a project management type software. They do give you a free 30-day free trial, so if you want to try it, you could click here and it would walk you through setting it up. It is not free. Like I said, you do have to purchase it after that 30 days. Let's go over to the next tab, which says Formatting. We're going to be talking about these templates I mentioned earlier right here in a later module, but this is where you would go to actually work with those templates if you want to customize them. Here's your spell check. You also can insert a line, delete a line, or copy a line. Whichever line you're clicked on is the one you insert a line above it. You can delete or copy. And this, this has more to do with customizing your template. The tab that says send slash ship, this is where you can do some of the mail merge options with Microsoft Word. And then you have some reports that are related specifically to estimates here. You can run a quick report, you can do a transaction history, estimate by job, estimate versus actual, or an item price list. And that's going to give you most of your options there. Most of the time you'll stay under the main tab. A couple of other things I want to mention, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you can actually see the subtotal, there's the markup, if there was any sales tax, and then the total at the very bottom. Over on the left, you can also add a customer message. You may say something like, please sign and date this proposal. You might say something like, thank you for your business. There's different options there. And also a little place for a memo that the customer will not see. That is just for you to see. And then also the customer tax code. And that's pretty much what you're going to see on an estimate. I'm going to go ahead and hit save and close at the bottom here. And because I changed Tom Allen's P.O. box earlier, it's asking me would I like to change this permanently in his record. I'll just say yes, and now that has changed. That's how you're going to go through and actually set up estimates for customers and jobs. Once you've created the estimates, you're going to sit back, and when the customer says do the work, you'll want to go through and create an invoice. And that's where we're going to start with the next video. I'm going to have you go ahead and go over to Section 3, Invoicing from Estimates, and we'll look at how all this invoicing works. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. Now, to get a free QuickBooks Pro 2020 introductory course, click over there. And click over there to watch all the videos in this QuickBooks Pro 2020 playlist.